Hey guys, so today I'll be talking about how I make my dehydrated minced meat. Uh, this is in particular dehydrated minced beef. Uh, I just made it a, two days ago and uh, it's really nice and chunky. I get some really nice long pieces as it is. It maintains its form and I'll be going over how I achieve this. So I actually made a full length video and documented every single step of it. And that came out to nearly, I think, uh, 50 minutes long. And I realized that that's uh, quite difficult for some people to go through if they don't have time. So I'm compressing everything down, uh, running it at uh, eight times speed, uh, just to show you every single step that went into it. And I'll just uh, give you short narrations as I go through that. Uh, I'll be releasing the full length video uh, part by part over the next few weeks. And I think it'll come up to four parts in total. So um, if you want a detailed view on that and uh, how I do it, please uh, uh, watch out for that. And I explain all the little nuances and details there. So uh, as you can see, uh, this is it. Um, I started off with uh, 2.17 kilos, which is about 4.7 pounds. And I ended up with 574 grams, which is about 1.2 pounds. So it loses about two thirds of its weight and maybe about, what, just over half its volume maybe more. I didn't check its volume. So, yep, this is everything that I made uh, this time around. It's uh, that much. This plus this plus this. I use it in pasta. I use it in my backpacking meals uh, at home and while I'm out in the back country. And it's uh, useful stuff to have at home. It's shelf stable uh, if your temperatures are a bit cool, but my place is uh, quite warm. So it isn't, I still put it in the fridge, but it's something easy, it's already pre-cooked, so if you are really hungry and you need something, just uh, rehydrate some couscous, toss some of this in, it's already cooked, you can just eat it as it is. And it's a nutritious meal. So let's get into the video uh, and I'll talk you through it. All right, I'm gonna have to speak quickly, so let's get into it. Over here I'm just showing that I'm using Australian beef, which has a very low fat content, and that's important. I have eight trays in total, which amounts to two kilos. Get yourself a microwave-safe dish, and this is for defrosting the meat. If your meat is already defrosted, hey-ho, get on to the next step. I'm breaking out the frozen meat here into the dish and popping it into the microwave. The objective is to be able to separate the strands of beef when you're cooking it. It takes about 17 minutes for each kilo of uh, meat, which is four trays. So here you can see me dishing it out into the wok, and you can use any vessel, but I use a wok. And now this is a second set of meat. And once again, it goes into the microwave and for 15 to 17 minutes on defrost. And once it's done, you can start to see a little bit of a darker meat here. It means some of them started to cook, but no worries on that. And you can see a little bit of liquid in the microwave dish, toss that out. Now get yourself a cover which fits nice and snug and set your heat to medium. This stage of cooking should take about 10 to 15 minutes. Just monitor your meat for water condensation on the cover and keep an eye on the amount of liquid that's gathering. After about 10 to 15 minutes, your meat should start to look like this. There's an amount of uh, liquid gathering around the meat. Get yourself a bowl and a ladle and start to ladle out all as much liquid as you can. And get your meat as dry as you can. Once that's done, move the meat to the side. This is why I like a wok. You can see some meat that is uh, still uncooked here, but no worries. The wok allows you just by means of geometry and uh, gravity to drain the, as much liquid as possible. A pot and a pan will not be able to do this. So get as much liquid as you can out, then get your meat back into the middle and um, center it nicely and cover it once again with the cover. And this should this next stage should take about 10 to 15 minutes once again, and you can start to see a lot of steam coming out here. It's cooking well. Uh, once another 15 minutes has passed, your meat should be fully cooked, but just monitor it and uh, pay attention to the color. Once you lift it out, you can see a whole bunch of steam, but not very much liquid left. A lot of liquid has already evaporated and been drained out by us manually. So the heat has already cooked it in the steam, and as you can see, very little liquid accumulating here. Do what you can and get as much liquid as you can out. So yeah, not much left at all. Now get the meat back into the middle and at this point the meat is already cooked. Start to break apart the meat clumps and uh, this is important so that it is able to dehydrate properly later. Uh, large clumps find it more hard, more difficult to be dehydrated and getting them into nice small strands and chunks, not really chunks actually, but small pieces will make it much easier to dehydrate. Take some time in this point. It makes the process go a lot better later on. So over here, you can actually see me going quite detailed and uh, breaking it apart properly. So once you've done basically breaking everything apart, mix it up nicely and make sure everything is nice and loose, then go and prepare greaseproof paper for the trays of your dehydrator if the holes in your trays like, are rather large like mine. Uh, my top tray has a 
separate plastic insert with smaller holes but I can only use that for the first uh, round of dehydration the second round once the meat has become smaller uh, I will not be able to do that so now you can see here the meat is uh, actually nice and dry and very uniformly cooked get your trays and with the grease proof paper and start to distribute them on the trays you don't have to pay too much attention to uh, the distribution here you can make it a little bit thick no worries about that we'll see how that happens later even if it doesn't dehydrate all the way through there is a way around that so you basically have to get all the meat that you have done into the number of trays that you have my dehydr dehydrator has five trays so i have to make everything fit the important thing is you do not block the air parts so just pay attention to that mine is in the middle so as you can see here i'm filling up uh, i think my fourth tray and after this you'll see my fifth tray with a plastic insert and yep i'm just filling in the last bit of that and now i'm back now we move over to the dehydrator now set your dehydrator to as close as possible to 63 degrees uh, centigrade, minus 65, and leave it for at least uh, 3 to 4 hours. I'm just sending it 24 hours because I'm going to leave it overnight. So make sure there's enough air gap between the trays and let it go. Now this is 7 hours hence overnight and you can see that the meat is more or less dried and you can start transferring it to the wok. Uh, it feels quite dry, like, a bit like granola. So toss it into the wok and over here you can actually see a little bit of it sticking to the paper. That means it's still not fully dry. And uh, in the next tray you'll actually be able to see a little bit of a wet uh, meat which is not fully dry so no worries on that just empty out all your trays into the wok and uh, mix it around a bit once you've mixed it around and redistributed the slightly moist meat amongst it put your, your trays back together with a grease proof paper and start to fill them in again this time you'll be able to fill in a lot thinner because the volume of the meat has decreased and keep going on my top tray I will not be able to use the plastic insert I'll have to use the paper and that doesn't matter because now I can use four trays instead of five because the volume has reduced now get the last bit into the tray and it's back onto the dehydrator at the same setting. Leave it for another 4-5 to five hours and those little light bits of meat will be your guide. Once everything is uniformly dark and loose to the touch, that means everything is dry and it feels like granola, back into the wok and toss it out. As you can see here, nothing sticks and that means everything is dry. That's a good indicator. Now spray it out and make sure you're confident that everything is properly dehydrated and let it cool for a while. Once it is cool, move it into the receptacle of your choice. I use a gallon freezer bag but really anything will do. So that's how I make my freeze dried uh, minced beef and I hope that was useful for you. Uh, do drop a comment below if you found it useful or if you have any suggestions. If you want to see the full length video, I'll be posting that up in the weeks to come so do keep an eye out for that. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.